of mess up the whole folding machinery of the cell, they become extremely toxic for the cells, and the cells can no longer tolerate this. And so this is how this protein, this protein gave us insight into uh, human diseases and what's happening on the molecular level. So I'm going to end up with actually two slides. One slide is for the biologists between, um, among you. So um, what we did, and this is like sort of a general uh, 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 overview. So we have repeat number changes, polyglutamine number changes in a certain protein. What we think is happening is that these repeats modulate the solubility and the interaction of the protein. So having very short repeat or having a very long repeat is not good. And it's sort of, we, we kind of have that whole spectrum of solubility. And what's happening is that the downstream effect, because these are mostly regulators, we see the effect on the targets of the gene and how the levels of the targets of the gene changes. <coughs> and also the phenotype. So we go from gradual phenotype. So again, it's not an on-off. It's, it's sort of a more of a spectrum. We go from very flocculent cells to sort of flocculent cells to almost free cells. And now to the engineers among you, um, I want to put this slide because I, I think it explains exactly what I'm trying to say here. Is that what we think is happening is that polyglutamine repeats act a bit like this, this knob on this vintage radio. Is that um, you sort of tune the volume. You're going too low or you're going too high is not good. And then there's a whole spectrum of effect on the function of that gene. And so you have sort of an, a digital input, but your output depends on this repeat number. So it's kind of a, a digital input analog output, which is, you know, I'm trying to be an engineer. I'm, I'm doing a very bad, you know, uh, um, play at it, so uh, forgive me. Um, and so that, that, I think, is the best analogy for, for uh, repeats and what they do to the function of a gene which you know, they, they're present in. OK, so I'm going to say a big thanks to uh, Kevin and the whole group, past and present um, members, and also to all the collaborators on the paper, which has been very recently published. So if you want more details, uh, you, can, you can check it out. And also a big uh, shout out to Stan and, and Gino for the impeccable organization of this conference. And thank you for inviting me. And I can take your questions now. Thank you. I'm just curious, you, you, you state that so extension of the glutamine which repeats cause these diseases. Yes. Has this been shown or, or yes. is it still correlational no, only? No, no, it's no, definitely, it's definitely proven. Okay. Uh, yes, expansion is the genetic cause and we definitely see a very good correlation between how long this expansion is, when the disease starts and how fast it progresses. Very recently, they found that there might be some uh, genetic interactors that might just affect um, when the disease starts by a few years before and after. So there might be other genetic factors that affect when the disease starts. But the presence of the repeat and the fact that the expansion is, is it, it, and it causing the disease is well established. Uh, can I ask if just a second? One more. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, it's the solubility of proteins. Yeah. Um, do you think there is a more general mechanism to regulate protein activity? Because even the wild type you showed has a kind of, um, there is a balance or an equilibrium between mm -hmm. soluble and non-soluble. Yeah. Is this a common or, I wasn't aware of yeah, this so kind of it, phenomenon in, for, for proteins in, in living systems now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in living systems, for example, what you have is that, um, especially for regulators, their levels are pretty low. So any small changes are going to affect, are going to definitely have that, that effect. And then they also showed for Huntington's disease protein is that when you stabilize it in the cell, when you increase its half-life, you 
decrease the neuronal cell death. So um, stabilizing the protein is, is extremely important. Now it's one of the avenues of, of, um, of um, research into their, uh, the treatment for these diseases, yeah.